Welcome back to the show. Dana, what what is your drink of choice today? Of course. That's redundant. Diet Coke? Yeah. Drink of choice. No. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. not it's not redundant. It's circular. No, it's what's a Obvious. question when you ask a question that you already know the answer to. Yeah. There's a word that? for it. Can't remember. If you know, you guys, if you know in the audience, you guys are way smarter than me. If you could like if you know what that is, just Will you just comment it? <laughs> Bail me out, please. It's going to come in a different episode. Yeah. Okay. I'll do a segue into our, the episode title, though. And that is... I'm having a hard time putting words this, which is interesting. So we want to talk a little bit more about the nuances of masking, right? And so that uh, one of our astute followers had mentioned to the uh, unmasking episode, doesn't everybody do that? Sort of struggle with when to act a certain way, when to not act a certain way, mm -hmm. whether to have Diet Coke all the time or have something else. It, what popped in my mind was like, out to dinner, I order Diet Coke. They say we only have Diet Pepsi. And I say, oh, that's fine. And really inside I'm dying. So, oh, wow. Okay. But that, yeah. So, that even that example, though. So, you can have, um, like in a little kid who having something that's different than what they're used to, that could be more apparent. You could see that they could have like a meltdown or get really finicky about it or start crying or whatever and say, oh, it's not Diet Coke. Um, and yes, me as a fully fledged human, autistic, neurodivergent or not, you know, was trained to be polite and say, oh, yeah, that's fine. You know, even though. I might not feel that way internally. There's sort of like social graces, right? Um, how to get along with people, how to sort of, I was talking to a client yesterday about someone she works with peripherally and she was really feeling crap because she felt like she kowtowed to them too much. And I said, well, maybe you needed to do that in that, that sort of political arena that she's working in. That was a smart decision, even though it felt icky, right? She's not neurodivergent. I was like, sometimes you just need to do those things. You wouldn't do that in a, primary relationship, but in a, a work acquaintance outside of your business, mm -hmm. it's smart to do. So there are those kinds of things I think that humans do all the time. If we all walked around doing exactly what we wanted to do at any given time, it would be chaos and pandemonium, right? People would be doing whatever they want. So, and I would be like, Pepsi, Pepsi, you know, right. Or I'd say, no, it's not okay, but okay, give it to me. It's all you have. It'd be like a jerk about it. The right. big difference with neurodivergent masking is you start out with a self that is so rejected by the world and so judged by the world, right? So I can look at my two sisters who are not neurodivergent. Um, did they rock as little kids? No. Did they do weird thing, weird things as little kids and hear 8,000 times, Dana, what is wrong with you? No. I mean, kids hear that to a certain degree when they're doing goofy things. I would do it a lot more. So for me, growing up, there was a lot more feeling like, oh, crap, this thing that I would do naturally and I might even do when I'm alone where no one can see me is not OK. And so, yes, to a certain extent, society has to sort of, you know, little little kids don't want to sit in desks and study all day and we sort of socialize them into that. Right. You're not supposed to go uh, to the other kid on the on the uh, playground that you don't like and punch them in the face, even though you really, really, really want to punch them in the face, right? You don't, because you know you get in trouble, right? So there's these social norms that shape behavior. And yes, neurodivergent people grew up with those as well. But it's a deeper level of literally things like how I talk, how I blow my nose, how I'm sitting in my desk, how I'm breathing, get judged yeah. as different. And then that becomes this fundamental, I, do, I think unmasking is so difficult for us neurodivergents because it's not as simple as saying i'm just going to be more myself um a we don't know who we are because we spent all those years creating the schism of who we are mm -hmm. but it's also the sense of uh, there's so much trauma wrapped up in it it is is it it's a lot like when you do therapy with someone who has complex trauma you don't just jump in right away and start peeling away the layers 
you have to do it slowly. You have to do resource installation. You have to do it uh, each little layer, be integrated, and you have to wait in slowly or you're going to overwhelm the person. That's what I see happening with people that are unmasking. All of a sudden, they know they're autistic or ADHD or neurodivergent, and they're like, oh, I'm going to start acting more like I want to. It freaks us out, right? Because you can, I can say in my head, I don't care if someone sees me picking my cuticles. For me internally, I have so much shame about it and I've had so many negative messages about it. When I do that, it's, un, no pun intended, it's picking away at all those layers of trauma, all those years of I'm literally not okay in my own skin doing what feels right to me, right? So unmasking becomes super complicated then, right? Yes, I can now um, do things and make decisions for things that are aligned with who I know I am now. We, my partner and I have gone to uh, Seattle Storm games. I finally have realized it's so loud there, I just can't take it. And I've said to her, I'm just not going anymore. That was a neurodivergent freedom piece as a fully fledged adult, great, right? But all those things about like being shamed of why can't I handle the noise and why can't I wear headphones and why isn't that enough and something really wrong with me and am I going to be like this forever and am I going to have less and less friends am I going to die alone I mean all those it, it's much more complicated unmasking as a neurodivergent person than a neurotypical person would be just saying oh, I want to be more congruent I want to live my life more fully and more consistent with who I really am right so that's that's the big difference between I'm just going to do what feels right and a neurodivergent person being themselves. I can see students in my classes that are neurodivergent giving themselves permission to like shake their leg. And I can tell it's everything they can do to let that happen. And I can, I can just feel all of the energy in the room around like wanting them to stop. And I know they're aware of it because I'm aware of it. I'm aware of the good for you shaking your leg. And I'm also aware of myself being slightly irritated by it. And I'm like, oh, that's terrible, Danny. You, you would want to shake your leg. There's so many layers of society that are so embleedened in all of these pieces that have a shame layer of you as you were born are not okay. Right? Yeah. 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 That's and let's, and you know, yeah, I, I love, I, I think that's so well defined, Dana. And, you know, we, we got a comment that um, we tend to kind of start our episodes off and just kind of launch into mm -hmm. topics mm -hmm. that we automatically or assume, I'll say, that we assume that everyone knows about. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and I get that because get reminded you and I are, of wait and pause and remind us what the right. Yeah. yeah. So that feedback was really good. And like some people have got, got to some of our masking episodes Ooh. and they thought that it was about vaccinations and masking your face. And what we're really oh, talking that, about oh, is, that, okay, that right. Kind of what we're yeah. really talking about is psychological masking. Yeah. 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 And it's psychological masking, which is different than following social norms. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is, I am fundamentally broken mm -hmm. and not normal, and yeah. I must suppress myself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. in order to appear okay. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And so there is um, that, that is a nuance that mm -hmm. is important. And yes, we do rely on social convention. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, it would be pandemonium if we didn't. Well, and it's the heart of cultures. I mean, you, yeah. you think about cultures all yeah. across the globe. It's like social mm -hmm. conventions define a culture in oh, many yeah. ways. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying yeah, just, it you is can see the, the difference. organizing yeah. principle. Yeah. Right? It's an and organizing can, way. Yeah. We can see a current example of that being shaken in a way that society isn't typically ready for that degree of change just with the internet because there are things out there available yeah. that normally we wouldn't see and everybody's like oh my god you know and you can see sort of the excitement and tension that it creates at the same time so yeah it does <clears throat> that is one of the reasons we as a species have dominated the earth i think it's going to be our downfall too but it's one of the reasons we've dominated the earth is that sense of how you like act in your group right? The group that you're yeah. living with to, to survive or whatever, right? Would I love to, in a traffic jam, just drive my car on the shoulder and get there 
before everybody else and just say, screw all of you suckers for sitting there in traffic. Of course I would. I'm not going to do it. That's totally like just the neurotypical norm thing. You just don't do that. And I get a ticket and I have a fear of authority and there's a whole thing with that. But that sense of, um, is something wrong with me because I have that fancy, right? Yeah. That, that is a, uh, and it's, it's about every single aspect of your life when you're unmasking um, neurodivergence from the spoon I use, you know, there's jokes on the internet about, you know, show you like five different forks and which one would you be able to handle? And interestingly, it's different. I thought, oh, that one, no one will pick. And there's a few people that pick this crazy looking fork. And I'm like, ah, it makes me crazy even looking at it. To the soap I use, which is the same soup, soap I grew up with. And I'm like, do I only use ivory soap? Because my mom bought ivory soap. Should I buy something else? Should I try something? Right? Every single aspect of your life you question for a period of time and maybe always. Um, and, the, and that's a lot like uncovering trauma, right? You have this thing yeah. that you're like, oh my God, what's happening? And then you integrate it into your current brain and your current way of thinking. So you could say, oh, okay. You know, if I, if I was a, a kid who was abused by my stepfather, let's say you as a, just making this up, 38 year old person, woman now are going to process through what you couldn't as a little kid with your 38 year old brain. And that's sort of how trauma work works, right? You integrate it. That's what I mean by integrating. You, you, you fit it into your life and your frame now to make sense of it. And so, you know, that's sort of predictable, like I'm afraid or I'm mad at the person for doing that. And, you know, why didn't my mom protect me and all these other things that you could go with with it. Those are forms of integration. That is happening when someone's unmasking too, when they get a diagnosis too, because everything all of a sudden looks like, oh my God, I'm, I'm seeing the world through this different pair of glasses. And where do I end and the autism begin or the ADHD begin? And then if you add other people into the mix, oh my God, what am I, what am I, how am I, right? I mentioned mm -hmm. before we went on, when I came out as autistic at work, for the most part, it's been met with very well. And uh, I get lots of kudos for being an advocate. And it's a lot of why I am an advocate is the situation I work in. I get a lot of support there. But I also know I'm treated slightly differently than I used to be. And it, part of me is just kind of like, oh, there it is. You know, just little subtle things that I don't even think people know they're doing, but I'm like, there it is right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so all of those, and it's different for everybody as they're unmasking, um, it can feel like your, your autism or your ADHD is worsening because now you're like giving yourself permission to feel those things that before you just suppressed. Um, so it can actually feel like for a while you're losing some degree of functioning, you know? Um, I don't see the, the path being the same for everybody. I've been paying attention. Like, is this similar to what I went through? I have so many clients that are going through something similar, but it's not linear. It seems to be a little different for everybody, or I would have tried to write about it and try to create a, a theory about it. Other than that, anytime you're an adult and you're having to unpack lost aspects of self, neurodivergent or not, it's a process and takes a while, you know? I was in therapy way before I ever knew I was neurodivergent for close to 20 years. And that was mostly what we were doing was just, who is Dana? Who is Dana? Who is Dana? It's okay. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. Um, which is great because that served me after I found out I'm autistic. But that sense of um, you, the water in the tank is now different. You know, you'd be, you were thought you were a saltwater fish and now you're in fresh water and you're like, Oh my God, I'm going to die. So that, that unmasking, I think, you know, we've talked about that being one of our largestly viewed videos on this channel. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think that says something, right. That people are struggling with that. And what does it mean? And how do I mask? How do I unmask? What, what do I do around that? <clears throat> the one thing that I have found that does help regardless of the pond I'm in, is to tell people around me what unmasking is and tell them, you know, I may be doing some of that, right? So I have now given myself complete permission to pick my thumb cuticles when I need to, right? No more shame about that. And I'll tell some, like if I'm in the middle of teaching and I picked one off and it starts bleeding, which used to just mortify me, right? 
without even missing a beat. I'll just keep talking. I'll walk over a backpack. I'll get a Band-Aid. I'll put it on and just keep going. I did have one student ask me about it a couple years ago. And I'm like, yeah, it's just seems to be like my one STEM thing that I really need. And I've tried to stop and it just makes me crazy. And now I know I'm going to do that once in a while. And so I have band-aids in my backpack to deal with it. It's fine. No big deal. And they were like, that's so great. And I, that sort of is that version of unmasking that I had to come to terms with that that was okay. because all these other messages, right? And that will always sort of be there. Like, why can't you stop doing this? Um, that that is what makes unmasking complicated. But if you let people in your life know about that a little more, I think they can see you in a different light and it might help ease some of the misfit that you get from other people, right? I'm much more congruent about um, things I'll do at my teaching job that are outside of just teaching and meetings, like when we have to do other things. Whereas before I would have felt like I have to, now I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that, right? going out to lunch with the group is one of them. I'm like, I just, you know, eating a meal in a restaurant that I don't know is just too much. And so, but I've said, I've just avoided it before. And now I'm like, yeah, this is an autism thing. I don't want to do this. And I think it does help them create a frame for it too. Like, oh, okay. You know, I work with psychologists, so I would hope they want to understand me, but who knows? Um, so that unmasking thing is a big one and it's, uh, um, it's complicated. And I really want to let our viewers know that it can be super painful. It can be liberating, right? It can be amazing um, and super complicated and sticky and messy. And it's different for everybody. Right? I mean, I think the idea of knowing or preparing yourself for the challenge or the difficulty is really important. Yeah. Because when, in essence, when you change your behavior, your actions, and you've been in the context of different relationships across your life, mm -hmm. you will inevitably change all those relationships. Yeah. And so how do you think about that in a way that still leaves you feeling efficacious? Yeah. You know, is, is really, I think, really important and yeah. that... I think unmasking as well. And again, we're talking about psychological unmasking people. <laughs> yes. Just, right. I just want to make sure I'm just going to put that in there. Not the COVID unmasking. <laughs> right, right. Not the physical. Uh, we talk a lot about masks. We talked about yeah. stop gas masking yourself yes, in the last yeah. episode. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, and now we're talking about psychological masking or unmasking. Mm -hmm. And that is that there is... Um, an authenticity, like living authentically. Yeah. Again, mm -hmm. I don't think that living authentically means that you screw every single social norm and you do whatever and that you want. Right. That's not what we're saying. And I and I think living authentically is not just the role or the job of a neurodivergent individual. Mm -hmm. It is really, I think, a search for all humans. Yeah. <clears throat> That's right. It's that that <clears throat> neurodivergence, uh, neurodiverse people tend to struggle with this more because of chron chronic um, trauma, yeah, and complex trauma, mm -hmm. and that it's hard to come up against the majority. Oh, yeah, and, right. Yeah. And and so there are so many layers to this, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I think that you know, you don't approach anything that's complex in big, grand ways. Right. You right. do it in small, bite-sized mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. Experiment with this in safer contexts. Right. You know, there's a reason why we hang out with certain people. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like when you can be, you can, you know, show up to your friend's house in your pajamas without a bra, mm -hmm. you know, you've reached another level. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like whatever that, right? Like, right, right. You've yeah. hit another level of being yeah. yourself. Um, and, and that's really how there are degrees and shades of that yeah. as you integrate into the world around <clears throat> you. And it's yeah. not the same for right. every single environment. Yeah. And so, yeah, this is, it's not yeah, easy. Absolutely. And for me, a lot of it is the like internal world, 
and how it expresses itself to the external world at any given point in time. When people mm -hmm. talk about MS a few minutes ago, when you, you were saying the words, how do you, and you sort of stopped <laughs> for a second in my brain, just to give people an idea of what a neurodivergent brain works like. And not everybody's going to know this reference. It's like some seventies song that goes, how do you do? Ooh, 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 na, 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 just me and you. And it, that totally started playing in my brain when you said that. And I was thinking like the little kid in me would have just started singing that when you said, how do you imagine how yeah. disruptive that would have been. The adult me is like, oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. And yeah. now I can see just my brain doing that. I'm like, that's just my neurodivergence. It's okay. Yeah. Um, but that constant pushing, you know, it, that breathing between my inner world and the outer world and when do I, and when don't I, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And maybe it comes back to, Another theme that you and I tend to revisit, mm -hmm. which is choice. Yeah. When you can see it happening, it's slow enough for you to see it happening. You can observe it. And then you can make a choice. Not here, not now. Yes, yeah. here. Oh my gosh. Yes, here. And I can do that for about two minutes before I got to leave. Like, like yeah. get it. And that's all. Those are all private thoughts. Um, but empower and there's an empowered sense or we call this efficacy of oh i made a choice this isn't a reflexive thing where i'm have to survive um yeah, yeah, you yeah. know it, it's a different it's a thriving kind of idea mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is oh i i get to make that choice and i also understand that if i don't do this yeah that could be a problem and it's yeah. okay right or in the if grand i don't scheme do things, this it would be okay i mean either or it's okay like your your yeah. nail your your yeah. hangnail yeah. situation yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. not hurting anybody yeah. um you know and it you know so how do we think about this but again as our answers usually are it depends mm -hmm. it's very nuanced it depends mm -hmm. on so many things yeah. how you're feeling at the time Who's surrounding you? What context are you in? What are the general systems and rules that are happening at that moment that yeah, like are dictated it, by work? If or, I had been in my know, board exam and someone said that, of course I wouldn't yeah. have sung that. My, if I was with my my wife or my sister now, I would totally have broken into that and they would have laughed. Yeah. And thinking back to the friends I had growing up, that's something we would have done. So I even found a social group with people, the, the other weird kids that would do that, right? And that's what you meant by yeah. surround yourself by people that you can, to a certain degree, be yourself in. But knowing yeah. that you shouldn't do it all the time because no one does, to speak to what the, the comment was, that it just doesn't happen in society, right? Yeah. Or find the time for it or never say anything about it. It doesn't, feel, it doesn't mean you have to put it out there. You, you won't die if you don't necessarily. And then you have that you're in the driver's seat <clears throat> who gets to decide. And that's, that's empowerment. As soon as it's a decision you can make, you are in the driver's seat and you have empowered yourself versus a, I have to, I have to, or I can't. Oh, I'm going to choose not to. Boom. Now you're the one making the decision. And that's a, that's a huge um, win in terms of therapy where you get to be the one in the driver's seat. It's a lot of what yeah, Or should. Doing. Should's should. another one of those. Yep. Yep. Versus I, right. I, I should, will, I will not, I will choose not to. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or I will choose to and yeah. understand to. Yeah. that those consequences, potential consequences for me are acceptable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, sure. so, okay. So, you know, here we are, we talked about on gas masking. Yeah. Now we're talking about unpsychological masking. <laughs> but I, I do think it's good, though, that people that we can see which episodes people are watching most. Because clearly, there's mm -hmm. more than just that half an hour that we could talk about it more. And so we'll try to do more, go deeper into some of these things. for you. Guys. Yeah. And it and these are very complex topics that are so mm -hmm. individualized or idiosyncratic to you yeah. that yeah. it's hard to say what's good for me is good for you. Instead, yeah. let's empower you with a way to think about it so that you can make an informed choice and decision right. exactly. about what's best for you. Yeah. Um, so that's what we hope to do anyway. 
Thank you. All right, everyone. Be good to you. We will see you, catch you. No. Why would we catch people? Why do I say we're that? Not, we're not going to see them. They're going to see us. You can see us later. Because <laughs> we're really not going to see you ever. <laughs> we'll be back. How about we'll be back? We'll you can do Arnold. I'll be back. Yes. We'll be, I love we'll it. We'll just end with that. Well, I'll clip that audio and then we'll send it that way. Okay. There you go. Bye everyone.